Hi, I'm Julianne de Sal Lorenz, and we're going to be going through a presentation today on the two OLIS CPL solo spectrophotometers, one for the ultraviolet and visible region, and the newest one for the near infrared region. Uh, so, in order to get started, I'll share my screen and we'll open up the uh, slideshow from the beginning. And uh, thank you very much for your interest in our circularly polarized luminescence spectrophotometry systems. Uh, again, as I say, we'll not only look at the two affordable uh, and small CPL solos, but we'll also look at our two combination CD and CPL spectrophotometers. Uh, as a reminder, of course, chirality is prevalent in life. Uh, uh, generally, chiral molecules exhibit optical activities with absorption, circular dichroism, or emission. CPL related to molecular structure. And here, of course, lanthanide complexes are very popular uh, molecules for uh, studying with CPL. Uh, this slide reminds us that CPL spectroscopy is also a sensitive technique for the detection of the folding unfolding transition in proteins. Oh, CPL has been used for decades. Uh, Traditionally, it was a very large and expensive uh, technique to get into. Uh, and indeed, before several years ago, there were no small and affordable CPL instruments. The market leader, which uh, many of you might be familiar with, um, is literally two circular dichroism spectrometers combined. Um, and therefore, it is uh, two meters or longer in length and close to a quarter of a million dollars in price. The CPL solo, on the other hand, can fit in a small corner of your laboratory. Uh, this small and affordable CPL, uh, we hope, is accessible to a very large body of people, and it will be available to anyone who can afford a CD spectrometer. Uh, this picture is just kind of fun. Literally, the entire instrument is inside of this crate. This includes the instrument, the electronics, the computer, uh, small and easy to ship, obvious and easy to set up. Of course, most importantly, exquisitely sensitive and easy to use. Uh, just to remind you, of course, what the old one uh, looks like, nice and large, uh, expensive and entirely outmoded. Um, the CPL Solo, on the other hand, small, affordable, and clearly cutting edge. Therefore, you no longer have to fall short of adding this powerful and important measurement to your laboratory nor do you have to squander vast sums of money to buy one. Dr. Richard J. Desa, the inventor behind countless brilliant breakthrough uh, Olus products, uh, pushed back from the desk on this particular day and said what he said so many times, getting the right answer is good. This is the very first paper uh, citing the, uh, the uh, CPL solo, uh, Gail Ong, uh, the University of Connecticut is the first to purchase the instrument and not surprisingly the first to uh, publish citing it. Beautiful results you will publish with confidence. This is the computer screen during data collection. And on this next slide, we see a printout of that screen we were just looking at. Um, you can see here that we are directly collecting the left emission, the right emission, taking their difference, which is by definition the CD. Um, in this particular experiment, we had our excitation wavelength at 380. We were covering a span from 580 to 630, as we see here. Uh, this is the opening page of olisclarity.com talking about the CPL instruments, ready for your lanthanides, proteins, and other emissive chiral molecules. This next line is very important as well. Um, direct digital acquisition of luminescence left and luminescence right means zero concerns about calibration, G-factor corrections, and the possibility of incorrect user settings. Uh, this again is from our website, uh, designed on first principle for highest sensitivity CPL and incidentally polarization of fluorescence. This model is a third the price and a quarter the size of the competitor's products and yet has excellent sensitivity and stability. Maximum excitation is achieved 
with the brilliant and stable filtered LEDs, which is how we can eliminate the need for a big xenon arc lamp and scanning monochromator. Uh, maximum emission sensitivity is achieved using uh, a small single grading high throughput monochromator and very importantly, photon counting. Um, all digital performance with factory locked-in calibration, that is no need for a lock-in amplifier and therefore no need for, and also no need for G-factor corrections. And again, we have two models, one for the ultraviolet visible region and a second one for the near infrared region. Uh, phosphorescence lifetime can be measured in the ultraviolet visible. Uh, two testimonials from two of the very first to purchase the instrument, Dr. Ung, uh, came to us uh, when he was submitting a paper and he had some feedback from reviewers that he wanted to address. We helped him with that and his follow-up was, we were already confident in the data, but now we are perfectly armed to reply with confidence and diplomacy. Your instrument has already been well advertised in my presentations to various universities and I will continue to do so. Uh, Professor Hegman, uh, the unit works great now. We had an online demo for all the group, easy and straightforward. That's a marvelous uh, thing to say about your instrument, easy and straightforward. Here we have um, a CPL uh, spectrum, of course, in the visible region. Uh, here we were using the Heinz PEM uh, modulator. Um, and a Hamamatsu photon counting detector. Uh, the spectral range of the ultraviolet visible uh, instrument is 230 to 870. The excitation wavelengths, again, are coming from an LED. So pretty much you can choose any wavelength you like for excitation. The near-infrared CPL, these data were collected clearly just here in November of 2021. Um, these particular uh, results were covering a range of 900 to 1120 because that's what the sample uh, was active across. Uh, the detector and the quarter wave plate that we're using actually have a full range out to 1600 nanometers. In fact, probably a bit beyond that. So stepping through data acquisition um, of the spectra that we just looked at, they took about 30 minutes to collect. And um, these next few slides will show you exactly how we did that. The first one will show you the raw spectra collected of the left circularly polarized, and then the next one of the right circularly polarized luminescence. We then put these two scans over each other on a single graph for you to look at. Um, then we took their difference, which of course is CD by definition. Uh, fourth, we applied a smoothing algorithm so that the data are a little prettier. Uh, and then finally, we took the difference of the raw answer and the smoothed answer so that you could see that this smoothing process did not change the structural information at all. Um, this reversible and um, confirmation is obviously unavailable from any other CPL spectrophotometer. It's available in both the OLIS CD and the CPL instruments. The ability to collect the true raw information and subsequently do any cleanup if you choose to. So here we have uh, the first uh, figure, which is simply the single scan of the left uh, emission. Uh, we now have the right emission. Uh, here are the two scans overlaid with each other. Obviously, there's a noticeable difference between them, which is very fortunate because this is telling us that the sample will have a CPL. Uh, here we see that CPL. This is the raw information without any filtering. Here we have the answer with the filtering. Um, we did a 13 point uh, filter given the span breadth. And um, here we have the difference between the two, which clearly is completely random about zero, confirming that no structural information was changed. Um, the in instruments look exactly the same, whether they are for the ultraviolet visible or the near infrared. Everything that differs between them is on the interior. Uh, those obviously include the grading on the monochromator, the modulator that we use, a PEM versus a quarter wave plate, and the detector, a um, 
photon counting uh, photomultiplier tube versus a photon counting in gas detector. But what if you need more than CPL? What if you need circular dichroism as well? Um, you'll be excited to know that the very same sample compartment that we use on the CPL solo uh, can be used on a scanning spectrophotometer as well. In fact, interestingly, we actually developed the combination CD-CPL before we developed the CPL solo. This toolbox or this uh, sample compartment is called a polarization toolbox. It's an open access sample compartment with before and after sample polarizer positions, before and after sample modulator positions, and of course the sample holder position. When you're uh, polarizing the measurement light, you're doing circular dichroism. When you are measuring the polarized emitted light, you're doing circularly polarized luminescence. Here is the polarization toolbox sample compartment with the lid off so that we can see inside of it. You might never take the lid off uh, and you probably won't very often for the uh, CPL solo unless you're exchanging accessories. Um, but then for the uh, CD CPL combination instrument, you will open it up so as to position the polarizer before or after the sample, as well as the modulator before, you see the holding bolts there, or after the sample as it's located here. For both CD and CPL, we have two different instruments. The 172 supports uh, not only ultraviolet visible, but also near infrared. And then for the ultraviolet visible alone, we have the 245. The 172 is the one that we have sold for the longest period of time, about 10, 11 years. Um, this is the 172. We have this beautiful prism grading monochromator, which gives us a spectral range of 185 to 2600 nanometers. This allows us to do absorbance and CD to 1700. And in point of fact, we're about to release a CD, the same unit enhancement to this one that will go to 2,500 nanometers. Um, the CPL, uh, you'll choose. You'll either have the ultraviolet visible uh, performance or you'll have the near infrared performance on this model. The near infrared performance will cost more. So the 172, as we saw, is built around a prism grading monochromator for absorbance where it's straight through the sample fluorescence, where you're doing right angle measurements, uh, and then you either have the polarizers in place uh, for CD and CPL or out of place for absorbance fluorescence. A 150 watt xenon arc lamp is used. Um, and again, your detector for uh, CPL will be the uh, photon counter for absorbance and CD, a photomultiplier tube. Um, 185 to 1700 is the default range for this instrument. You can extend it, as I say, to 2500 uh, at an additional cost with an additional detector. Um, and then the standard configuration is the ultraviolet visible for CPL. Um, many accessories are available for polarization, magnetic field, thin film holder, and so forth. And this holds true for the solos as well. Any accessory is compatible with any one of these four instruments is interchangeable with the others. Uh, the second combination uh, CD CPL instrument is the 245. Instead of the large prism grading monochromator, we have a much smaller double grading monochromator of our own design. Um, and then we have the same polarization toolbox here now with the lid on. And this is the usual access to your sample position. This then being your emission monochromator and the detector here. Here we see the xenon arc lamp coming into the monochromator for circular dichroism or for exciting uh, fluorescence and or CPL. Uh, so again, the same as before, uh, this, our small uh, double grading monochromator, which happens to be a subtractive double grading monochromator, which is particularly attractive if you're working with solid sa samples, thin films and whatnot, because independent of the bandwidth uh, that you're using, the sample sees a homogeneous blend of these colors. This is one of the inherent characteristics of a subtractive double grading monochromator as opposed to an additive 
double monochromature. Um, the spectral range for the 245 is very specifically 170 to 700 for CD, and then the ultraviolet visible for CPL. Uh, here we show the full system um, with the hummingbird monochromature, xenon arc lamp monochromature sample compartment, RFL. This is a cooling system for the lamp. Um, this is the control box for the Peltier, I believe, um, uh, some ancillary electronic boxes and uh, a computer. And then this box here contains the sum total of the electronics that operate the instrument. Uh, we love to keep the uh, electronics separate from the main spectrophotometer um, for ease in diagnosis and lowest cost support and repair. Uh, some data from the instrument, again, from uh, Dr. Ung's laboratory. Uh, here we have uh, his second paper uh, with further uh, lovely spectra. Uh, this is a paper uh, mislabeled. I haven't changed this title. These data actually came from Dr. Campagna's laboratory in Spain, uh, the University of Granada. And this was done with the 172 functioning as a solo which is quite possible to do because you don't have to use the big xenon arc lamp and double monochromator to excite your CPL. You can use the LED exactly as the solo does. And that's a very good way uh, to uh, get the highest sensitivity performance from the instrument. Um, here we have data that were in Campania's paper. Um, obviously, very, very small signals. In this case, notice that they used two LEDs for presumably hitting the sample from both sides with 402 and 420. Um, and so that was kind of a, a, a interesting experiment. Obviously we would love to see yourself using one of these instruments. This of course is the 172, the master control box, uh, the emission monochromator toolbox, detector, detector, computer system. And maybe that's you. Uh, so indeed, research is hard enough without unprofitable effort and squandered resources. The right instrument makes the difference between common and wasteful or brilliant and economical. So indeed, this is from our website. It's the slogan we've used for many years. Brilliant breakthroughs happen. Ours can lead to yours. Do not aspire to less. We would love to work with you. Um, visit us at olasclarity.com. Uh, contact us at 706-353-6547. And you can reach me, Julie DeSalle-Lorenz at julie at olasweb.com. Um, I'd love to hear from you and thank you very much for your interest. Oh, actually, let me um, stop sharing and just say thank you and uh, be in touch anytime. Okay, thanks.